It was a heart-stopping event. One million tons, 100,000 lives, and a hundred minutes. And it was one we all know well. Almost unstoppable. No, not that, but you're close. This is the story of the Crazy Eights Incident. On May 15, 2001, a CSX engineer and conductor were going to switch a string of freight cars from track K-12 to track D-10 for departure on another train at Stanley Yard in Walbridge, Ohio. The train consisted of CSX SD-40-2-8888 and 47 freight cars. 25 of them were empty, but 22 were fully loaded, including two tanker cars loaded with molten fennel, a toxic ingredient used in glues, paints, and dyes that is very harmful if inhaled or if it hits your skin. The air brakes, however, weren't connected as this was just a short switching maneuver within the yard, which makes sense, it's not illegal. The train moved north out of K-12, passing the conductor, who was positioned on the ground as the camera switch. The conductor advised the engineer by radio of the number of the cars that had passed him and the engineer acknowledged. With eight cars to go, the conductor notified the engineer by radio to prepare to stop. No reply. The conductor tried again when four cars remained. Still nothing. He then ordered the engineer to stop, but again there was no response. Meanwhile, the engineer noticed a misaligned switch and concluded that his train, although moving slowly, would not be able to stop short of it. He decided he was going to climb down from the train, correctly align the switch, and reboard the locomotive. Sounds silly, right? That's because it is. Before leaving the cab, the engineer applied the independent air brakes for the locomotive and attempted to apply the dynamic brakes as well, but failed to do so but applying the independent air brake also disables the dead man switch, rendering it useless. He then set the throttle at notch 8, or full throttle. If the dynamic brakes were selected as intended, this throttle setting would have caused the train to slow down a lot thanks to the electric generator. However, since the dynamic braking was not engaged, the setting only caused the train to accelerate. Therefore, the only functioning brake was the air brake, and this was not enough to counteract the engine power. The engineer climbed down from the cab, aligned the switch, and then attempted to reboard the accelerating locomotive. He was unable to do so, slipped and fell, and was dragged about 80 feet from the train, receiving minor cuts before he had to let go. Now, with no one on the train, it becomes a runaway, escaping the yard and onto the main line, accelerating faster and faster. The engineer quickly ran to another employee who had a radio, and he called the yardmaster, who promptly notified the Stanley Tower block operator and the train master. The Toledo Branch train dispatcher, located in Indianapolis, was also notified. The train was now proceeding southward on the Toledo Branch, also known as the Great Lakes Division. At Galetia Siding, at approximately 1.35 p.m., the train dispatcher remotely operated a switch for the train to enter the siding. A portable derail was there, ready to derail the train and stop this runaway. However, it was thrown clear from the track by the force of the train passing over it, and the train sped on like nothing had happened along the tracks. Then local police come up with an idea. Shoot to kill. The idea? Use a buckshot on a rifle to hit a fuel shutoff button near the fuel tank. But guess what? Don't work. It has to be held in to actually do anything, rather than pressed for a millisecond by a bullet. So, Crazy 8 speeds on a little bit. A few brave locals try jumping on board the locomotive, but they chicken out as they realize she's going much faster than intended. Meanwhile, northbound train Q63615 was directed by the dispatcher into the siding at Dunkirk, Ohio. The crew was instructed to uncouple their engine SD40-2-8392 from their train and wait until the runaway passed their location. Sure enough, at approximately 2.05 p.m., the runaway train roared past the siding, and after the switches were realigned, 8392 chased after the runaway.
Another engine, a GP38, was primed and ready ahead of the runaway to couple up to 8888 and push her back. The idea seemed dangerous, but was carried out nonetheless. Eventually, 8392 finally couples up onto the runaway at Kenton, going 51 miles an hour, and carefully applied the dynamic brakes, hoping the couplings won't rip apart from the force. The efforts pay off, and the train slows down to 11 miles an hour, and positioned at the Route 31 crossing was CSX trainmaster John Hofsfeld. He runs alongside the crawling locomotive and climbs aboard. There, he immediately shuts down the engine, and finally, the Crazy Eights comes to a gentle halt. After nearly two hours and 66 miles of running, the whole thing was finally over. And the GP38 further ahead wasn't really needed anymore. 8888's brake shoes were completely burned off, and it was found that the air brake on the locomotive was in full service braking mode, and that dynamic brakes were working, but not set to braking mode. In the end, the unnamed engineer, who was first hired by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1966, promoted to engineer by Penn Central in 1974, and a check ride with a supervisor in January 2001 with CSX, and a clean job record was fired from CSX. 8888 had its brake shoes replaced and continued service for years. Sadly, several museums attempted to preserve the locomotive for its historical significance, but CSX stated themselves that the engine just wasn't worthy for preservation, and unfortunately in 2017, it was rebuilt into an SD40-3, renumbered as CSX 4389, which still operates to this day with that weird SpongeBob Square Cab build. It's been 17 years since this incident, and since then, it has inspired the 2010 film Unstoppable, and runaways have been less frequent over the years. But the Crazy 8 incident will never be forgotten. Throttle setting would have caused the train to slow down a lot thanks to the electric. <coughs> and this had little to not enough power. And, and this was. And this was. Motorcycle. Oh, but guess what? Don't work. Has to be held in, not tapped. So Crazy 8 speeds on. A few brave locals even try jumping aboard the engine, but chicken out as they realize she's going much faster than they expected. Oh, come on! At approximately two point, and at approximately two point, two point, no, it's two o'clock, you moron.